Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be giving you 10 tips that will help you have an easier time when using stainless steel pans. So you ready? Let's get into this. There's a reason why all the big chefs in the world use stainless steel. If you use them properly, the performance is unmatched. The only problem is if you're new to stainless steel, you're going to have to learn a whole new way of cooking because it's not the same as it was with the pans you had before. All the tips we're going to be talking about here pertain more towards higher quality stainless steel pans. You can tell which ones those are because they typically have multiple layers and they're usually a lot heavier than your standard pans. If you don't know whether or not your pans are multi-layered, just pick it up. If it's pretty heavy, then it's probably one of those multi-layer pans. But if it weighs about the same as those cheap skillets you can get at Walmart, then probably not so much. If you're still not sure, you can go to the manufacturer's website of your pans and find out there, or you can just do a Google search and probably find out what your particular pans are made out of. The reason some of these tips might not work on those lighter pans has to do with their construction. Lighter pans aren't quite as durable, so they're not going to be able to withstand heat the way a heavier pan does. And they're probably not going to be able to retain the heat as well either. You got to be pretty careful with that because a pan like that can warp a heck of a lot easier than you think. The heat retention on those multi-layer pans also gives you the ability to put room temperature ingredients into the pan without them dropping the temperature at all. The first tip I'm going to give you is to lower the temperature that you cook at. You might be used to throwing a pan down on your cooktop and cranking the heat up all the way in order to cook something. But when you're dealing with stainless steel pans, the highest you're ever going to cook at is probably at about a medium high. In fact, for the vast majority of cooking that you do, you're not going to be setting the temperature up past medium. Because of the heat retention we were just talking about with those better pans, your cooktop doesn't have to work as hard to maintain the temperature in there, and therefore you're not using as much energy, and you also don't have to deal with temperature fluctuations as much either. Another thing about stainless steel pans is that you always want to preheat the pan. You never want to put ingredients into the pan while it's cold. Most people don't realize that if you heat a stainless steel pan properly, it becomes virtually non-stick. The reason for that is although the surface of a stainless steel pan looks nice and smooth, it's actually porous. And as it gets closer to the proper temperature, those pores close. Once that happens, there's nothing left for food to stick to. This is one of the reasons why it's a good idea to have a couple of good non-stick pans also. If you wanted to make sunny side up eggs or something like that, for instance, you wouldn't want to take those eggs and put them into a hot stainless steel pan. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some scrambled fried mess. For something like that, you want to start with a cool pan and bring the temperature up slowly. And if you were using stainless for that, all those pores would be open and you'd have a sticky mess. All right, so you're preheating your pan. How do you know when that pan gets to the right temperature? The test I like to do is called the water drop test. If you're new to stainless steel or you just got yourself a new range but you're still using the same pans, the amount of time it takes to preheat is going to change dramatically depending on what kind of technology you're using. Radiant heats down at the bottom, gas is a lot better, but induction is going to heat up a heck of a lot faster than you can imagine. Once you've done this test with your different sized pans using whatever type of range you happen to have, then make a mental note of how long that takes on each one because that is going to be your base. Line. The way you do this is you're going to take your pan, put it on your cooktop, and set it to a, between a medium and a medium high. From that point, you're going to wait at least 30 seconds or so. 30 seconds probably isn't going to be anywhere near enough time, but we need to do this in increments just to find that sweet spot. Once it's been about 30 seconds or so, just take a few drops of water, put them on the surface of your pan, and see what happens. What you want the water to do is form something between one and three big globs of water. And those are just going to kind of roll around your pan like marbles. In fact, it looks kind of like mercury. If the water just sizzles off like this, then it means the pan's not hot enough and we need to wait just a little bit longer and retest. Once those balls have formed, you know that your pan has reached the proper temperature and you're ready to cook. One thing is once it reaches that temperature, you need to start cooking right away because if you wait too long, your pan will overheat and you run the risk of warping it regardless of how good of a pan it is. So keep that in mind, that's really important. If you're going to use oil in a stainless steel pan, it's best to do the preheat first then put the oil in and then put your food in immediately after that. Don't put the oil in and let it sit too long because then it's going to burn. You don't really want to put that oil in the pan while it's cold either, otherwise the surface of the pan is going to absorb that oil and that's going to suck too. Next, 
don't flip your proteins too early. What you have to realize is the meat will tell you when it's ready to flip. As that meat stays in contact with the surface of the pan, the protein strands in it will shrink. Once they've shrinked sufficiently, it's gonna release from the pan all by itself. You're gonna be able to tell really easy because if you do try to flip that meat too early, you're gonna feel it stick into the pan a little bit. In that case, just let it go and let it sit a little bit longer. If you have problems where every single time you go to wait and flip it, it ends up burned on that one side, that means you're running your temperature a little bit too high on your pans and you want to crank that down just a little bit. Once you got your proteins cooked and you're out of your pans, you want to set your pan on the side of the cook surface or on a cooling rack or something like that. You don't want to put them in the sink and especially you don't want to put any kind of cold water onto them. That's almost guaranteed to warp your pans because you can't take them at a high temperature and drop them to a low temperature instantly like that. The metal's going to contract much more quickly wherever that water makes direct contact to on the pan and that's going to be the spot where it warps. Just let it sit off to the side a little bit and cool down and you'll be good to go. By the way, if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks and all sorts of other kitchen related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. To clean the pan, you can always think about doing a little bit of a deglaze on it. That is basically, you take that cooled off pan put it over medium heat, add some water to it, or if you want to make a sauce out of it, you can add some chicken stock or some wine or something like that. And then when that heats up, you can take a Teflon spatula and scrape up the dried up brown bits at the bottom of the pan, and you can mix those into the sauce. You can even add some herbs and stuff to it and make a nice little sauce for the protein that just came out of the pan as well. If you just want to clean the thing, then you can use water as well, and you'll still be able to scrape up a lot of that stuff on the pan, pour it out, let it cool down on the side again and then it makes it much easier to clean up. This next tip was actually inspired by a comment that we got on the channel. The person was asking if you could take frozen vegetables and put them straight onto a hot preheated stainless steel pan. After doing a little bit of research on that, the answer is kinda yes and kinda no. After thinking about it for a little while, I'm probably more on the side of no, probably not a good idea. Remember, you got a super hot pan and you're taking something that's frozen solid and sticking it directly onto that hot surface. I don't think those vegetables would warp the pan right away, but I think they might cause a little bit of damage over time. That holds especially true if you're trying to take a frozen piece of fish and putting that directly onto the surface of your pan as well. It's best to let all that stuff thaw out a little bit before you put it into your pan, but if you really want to put it in there, I'd recommend putting in some oil first or some liquid like chicken stock or something like that just to create a little bit of a barrier between the food and the pan. That way you'll provide it a little bit more protection and you'll probably be okay. You know, I hear people say, hey, you know, I got these stainless steel pans and I'm excited because I had these non-stick pans before and I had all these metal utensils that I couldn't use, but now I got the stainless steel and that's virtually indestructible so I can take all my metal utensils, use those all I want and I don't have to worry about messing my pans up anymore. You know, that's not really a great idea because contrary to popular belief, Metal utensils will scratch the cooking surface of a stainless steel pan. They're not quite as bomb proof as people think. You can use them in a pinch, but I would still invest in a good set of Teflon utensils just to protect your investment. Good pans are expensive. The last thing I got for you is about the dishwasher. My rule of thumb is don't put anything you value in the dishwasher. No expensive plates, no stainless steel, no crystal glassware. Just save that thing for your regular plates and cups and your flatware and none of the silver stuff. As far as stainless steel pans go, you can develop little white spots on the surface that are really hard to get off. And if you're like me, if you have a set of stainless steel pans that got that little copper ring around the outside, if you put those in the dishwasher, those are going to get tarnished really bad and they're going to turn gray. And that looks like crap. Even Ninja Neverstick pans have that stainless base on them and they say right in their advertisements that they're dishwasher safe. Well, we put one in there to test that out and the entire bottom of the pan ended up being tarnished and we had to use Barkeeper's Friend on it for about 15 minutes to get that thing to shine again. And it wasn't easy either. We had to kind of go to town on that thing to get it clean. So just do yourself a favor and hand wash your good stuff. Trust me, you're gonna be way happier. Oh, one little bonus tip for you. You don't need to season your stainless steel pans. When you're talking about something like cast iron, you've gotta season your pan and you've gotta keep it seasoned and take care of that layer. And that's not just for flavor, that's to maintain a somewhat non-stick surface on those things. When you're talking about stainless steel pans, if you're properly preheating it, it's going to be virtually non-stick anyway, so there's no reason to season it. Don't worry about it, not necessary. Not to mention, it's a giant pain in the ass. Hey, I hope you got a little bit of value out of these tips and they help make your life in the kitchen with stainless steel just a little bit better.
If you like this video, then you might like this video right here where we show you five different ways to clean stainless steel pans. If you're watching this video, then that one's a definite must see. Well, that's it for now. Hope to see you again really soon. And until that time, I'm Joe and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.